Okay. What I had hoped was that we would have enough time for this example and this exercise where I'm given an original locality that looks like this. 0 0.6 kilometers north of the Little Mermaid in Copenhagen, Denmark. So what I would need to do is start with the original coordinates for the Little Mermaid. That is something that I have to find somewhere. I found this because I went to the Little Mermaid and I took my GPS and I captured those coordinates in WGS 84. And I captured them to the nearest second for the purposes of creating an example where I have decent coordinates for the original location. And the process, what we wanted to be able to do is to use the georeferencing calculator to determine where this location is, given we know this, uh, this location. So that's where the Little Mermaid is, and the mm -hmm. idea was to find out where 0.6 kilometers north of her would be. So a basic georeferencing exercise. And the georeferencing calculator looks a little something like this. And the way that it works is the first thing you do is that you choose the type of calculation that you want to make. In my case, what I would like are the coordinates of 0.6 kilometers north of the Little Mermaid, and I'd like to know what the uncertainty is. So that's why it's a coordinates and error calculation. When I do a coordinates and error calculation, I'm always entering the latitude and longitude for the named place. There is another uh, calculation type, which is coordinates only. Because sometimes when you do a georeference, you already have the coordinates of the named place. And you only need to find the error. For example, if I have the locality of Accra. Okay, I can get a coordinate for Accra. I don't need the calculator to tell me that. What I need is the calculator to tell me how big should all of the uncertainty be given various pieces of information that I have. So that would be a different kind of calculation type, the error only calculation type. The calculator works like a recipe. When you open it, none of this appears, only this selection box appears. As soon as you make a selection, only this next box appears. In this case, what I've done is I've decided that the locality type, and you remember in the georeferencing quick reference guide, all those types are listed. There's a named place only. There's also a distance at a heading. That's one of the categories. So in this case, my description is 0.6 kilometers north of the Little Mermaid that fits this pattern of being a distance at a heading. Distance at a heading. So that's the locality type that I want to pick. Because the calculator is a recipe, as soon as I pick this box, everything else appears. That is, up to here, everything that I need to provide in order to make the calculation, and from here down to here, all the results of that calculation, and from here down to here, a couple of tools to help me figure out values that go in here. So, imagine that I've just chosen distance at a heading and all of this is blank. What I need to do is fill this up. So, what I need to do is select a coordinate source. Right now, by default, it said Gazetteer. The truth of the matter is that I took a GPS reading. So I should change this box to say GPS. Now my, my diagram doesn't show that, and that's an error. When I choose GPS, another option fills up over here, and that is what is the accuracy of the GPS at the time. Okay, So I didn't do it quite right in this example, but that's an example of where the coordinates come from. So let's imagine that I got my coordinates instead of having a GPS, that I got it from some gazetteer that listed it. So the coordinate system for the original, which had, took this form, was degrees, minutes, and seconds. So that's what I choose in my calculator. As soon as I do that, this whole section changes to be degrees, minutes, and seconds. I can change this to be decimal degrees, and then all these boxes change. And when I do so, the coordinates in here 
change to the coordinates in the other reference system automatically for me. So it was when I built this that I realized that you need to have the seven digits of precision for a decimal latitude and longitude. <laughs> Otherwise, as when you switch back and forth, boom, 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 these numbers change and you never get back to where you started. So that's where the magic number seven came from. So this is where I enter the original data for degrees, minutes, seconds, and the directions, north, and in the case of Copenhagen, it's also east of the meridian. My datum was WGS84, I looked on my GPS, and the precision of the coordinates given here is to the nearest second. Now all these choices that I make, every single one of these choices that I make, contribute to the uncertainty. Do you remember I showed a slide in which there were listed all the sources of uncertainty and examples of them? Each one of these contributes. So I finished down to here, I've got my coordinate precision in there as nearest second. Now I continue. The locality description has a direction in it, and that direction is north. Right there. It has an offset distance, which is 0.6. In my case, it's 0.6 kilometers, so I need to choose the distance unit of kilometers. Then, I need to add a couple of other things. The first one is the extent of the named place. What is the named place? The named place is the Little Mermaid. How big is the Little Mermaid? Well, let's say three meters across in radius. It's a little excessive, but it's, it's okay. Three meters is how big it is across the Little Mermaid. Measurement error, there isn't one. Measurement error comes when you're playing with a map. You remember you had your rulers out there and you were trying to find your coordinates on the map? The measurement error is your ability to distinguish between one coordinate and another on the map. So, usually what happens is you say, okay, listen, if I was to try to repeat this measurement, how small of a distance can I get consistently when I measure? And a rule of thumb is one millimeter. You can repeat one millimeter distances pretty easily if you're being careful. So what you would do is enter, if this was coming from a map, if these were coming from a map, you would enter in here the equivalent of one millimeter on your map. Well, how big is that? For that you use the scale converter. The scale converter, what you do is you enter one millimeter, that's your ability to measure, and you say what the scale of the map, and over here comes the answer in the units that you want. And that's the number you would put in here. But we didn't measure from a map. We measured from a GPS, and so the measurement error here is zero. Instead, as I said, I should have another uh, field here for GPS accuracy, and that's why I would enter whatever the accuracy was on my GPS at the time, which happened to be seven meters. So I'd enter seven meters there. Finally, we have the distance precision to select. And the distance precision is dependent on how the locality is written. In this case, I've chosen that that value should be one-tenth of a kilometer. And the reason is that the collector, me, was able to distinguish, or showed me at least, was able to distinguish to the nearest tenths of kilometers. So that's why I chose one-tenth kilometer in here. So all of that, how to make these choices, is written in the Georeferences Best Practice Guide, in the MANUS, HERPNET, ORNUS guidelines, and in the GBEF Best Practices book. It's all in there, how this should be done. There's actually a published paper as well. So all these are standards so that you could repeat it. So when you're finished then with entering all of that information, you will click Calculate, and the magic answers come up in these fields, separated from each other, and in this field, which you could select in its entirety and paste into an Excel spreadsheet. Because there are tabs in between it, it will go into the spreadsheet in columns, one after another, to save you copying and pasting. 
you'll notice that the answer comes out in the same units as you chose to begin with. So everything is based on the origin of the locality which has units in kilometers. So when you come up with a maximum error distance, this is the equivalent of a coordinate uncertainty in meters in the original units. If you were to put this into your database, you could put it in in this way with distance and units, or you could uh, translate that into coordinate uncertainty in meters and put 518 instead with no unit. And that's how it should appear for Darwin core. So that's how the georeferencing calculator works. And that's one of the exercises that we would have liked to have done. Um, you can, when you go home, use the georeferencing calculator to do some exercises that are available in the Manus, Herpnet, Ornus guidelines. And I'll show you those, because it's a good way to be certain that you're using the calculator the right way. So this is what the uh, Herpnet, Manus Herpnet Ornus georeferencing guidelines look like. And it describes how to do all the things that I just did. Let me go to the index, it'll be easier. So it tells you how should you determine latitudes and longitudes. And how are the determinations of all the parts contributing to the locality done. In other words, this is documentation of what the calculator does for you. This is all the math. This is all the, the choices that are made. This is the difficult stuff. So if you want to know how the calculator works and why, here is where it's written. The important part that I want to get to are the calculation examples. In the index on the side here are calculation examples, and there's a set. There's for every choice that you can make in the calculator, a description and the answer that you should get. So I'll go to those so you can see what they look like. So here's the first one. What we want to do is an example where all you have are coordinates. Suppose it's degrees and minutes, as in this case. Sorry, this is a degrees, minutes, and seconds example. So yes? I'm to follow where that file is. This file is in the georeferencing folder from georeferencing day. So, within georeferencing, this, you have georeferencing here. Go into georeferencing calculator, and this is the georef guide. If you're running the calculator, which I almost was, uh, let me go back here. Oops, no, that's not back. If you're running the calculator, the calculator would be running here. I've got an error that I have to deal with in a minute. It would be the georeferencing guideline link directly underneath it. This is the georeferencing calculator page. You either run this online or you run it with the file called gci2.html. It's this one in the georeferencing folder. gci2.html is the one that opens that page. It it does not here because I've copied the entire georeferencing calculator to my desktop. And that is true. What I gave to them is entirely desktop. It's the same thing that happens online, but you've got to copy locally. So all the documentation and the calculator is all there. That's why when I clicked on my calculator here, I opened the guidelines also on my 
computer. You can see that it came from a file. So all that stuff's available locally. Sorry to go through this all so fast, but the day is short and the course is long. Okay, so this is one example of coordinates only, and there are two of them. There's the first example and the second. And so it says what it is that we're trying to achieve. We're given that there were 35 degrees, 22 minutes, 24 seconds north, and some other longitude. And what we want is what is the uncertainty just given those coordinates. And you might think, okay, it's quite small. How big is a second? That's how big the uncertainty is. That means you didn't read the guidelines yet. <laughs> or didn't pay attention to the, um, to the presentations. So if we look through here, it tells what should we do. First, choose a calculation type of error only. We already have the coordinates. We don't need to calculate those. We only need to calculate the error. The locality type is the coordinates only. The coordinate source, this came out of the lo locality description. It's on the tag or something like that. The coordinate system is degrees, minutes, and seconds. There they are, degrees, minutes, and seconds. The latitude is that one, the longitude is that one. So I'm entering all of these things into the calculator one by one. Now, the datum, there's no datum listed here. So I choose datum not recorded in the calculator. Right? I'm being honest. I don't know what it is. The coordinate precision is to the nearest second. Right? These are all integer seconds. So that's to the nearest second. I have no measurement error because I'm not using a map. The distance units, I can choose any of them, any one that I want. So now I do my calculation, and the answer is this is the same coordinate when translated into decimal degrees. Both of these. Maximum error distance is 119 meters. That's pretty big. That's a lot bigger than you expect for something to the nearest second. Why? Well, at the very last in here it says where all that's coming from. 79 meters of it comes from the unknown datum. Why 79 meters? Because the calculator knows that in that position in Earth, the difference between WGS84 and any other datum is 79 meters. There's actually a map incorporated behind the scenes that knows this value for everywhere on the Earth. 40 meters of it came from the precision being only to the nearest second. That may come as a surprise. If you put only to the nearest second, that's a 40 meter uncertainty. Then the total uncertainty is the combination of those two. 79 from unknown datum, 40 from being less precise than you maybe could be for a total of 119 meters. So that's the, basically the recipe and the result. And what you would want to do as an exercise for yourself is run the calculator and try to reproduce that result. And if you don't, Try to figure out why, and if you really don't, write to me, and I'll help you figure out why. So there are plenty of different kinds of locality types and examples for every one. There's a named place one. Here's a distance only one. And so on. They're all in there. So are there any questions about at least where to find this thing? You'll have to do all of this on your own, but I wanted to show you how you could test yourself. Open the calculator and try to reproduce the calculator examples because the answers are there and it tells you why. <coughs>